I think the time that I spent as a bedside nurse spending long 12 hour days with families allowed me to much better understand the minute expressions that a child may make that tells a parent something. Um, as a provider, you don't have that time. You don't have the time to spend in the room to see how that child is really communicating with a family when it's a child who can't say with words or very obvious body language. And I think so many of these parents struggle to get others to understand those really small communication methods that the children use and that the parents know extremely well what it means and what it means to the child, what it means to the parent. And so it's, it's often, I think, really frustrating for, for parents to not have people who are making big decisions about the care for this child or encouraging families to make decisions, um, maybe not have an understanding of that communication that the child is able to provide. Spending that time with them at the bedside and having a parent who's willing to take the time to teach me is so important. And I, I think as I transition from a bedside nurse to a nurse practitioner who's working as more of a provider role for the family, I love to, often in the evening when things are a little bit more quiet, go and sit in the room and spend time with that family, spend time with the parent talking about the day or reflecting upon things, but also watching the interaction that the parent is having with the child to see how how they feed off of each other and how they communicate with each other. And I, th I think what's interesting is, you know, we, we talk about these little ways that the child may communicate with the parent, but there's also the reverse. There's that parent's touch in a certain way that tells the child they're there or reassures the child in somewhat non-traditional ways maybe than we often think um, that a parent communicates back with their child.